Man, that's intentionality. You hear me? Listen, a try, catch this statement. A try has the same amount of intentionality as a do. A try has the same amount of intentionality as a do. Did you hear what I just said? The, uh, here, here's a story I always like to share just to kind of help you see what I'm talking about. A swimmer had to swim 500 yards. He swam 250 yards and now starts to become a little tired and flustered. He looks back to where he started from and he sees the people on the shore cheering on and waving at him. And the man turns around and swims back to the shore that he started. Guess what? He just swam 500 yards. The problem is he decided to do the other 250 going back. <laughs> Every time I, I, I hear that story, man, I think about people who, who only had the same amount of time left to get it done that they started. And because they're so familiar with where they came from and not hungry enough to where they want to go, they will turn around and go back to the familiar. And people do it every day. But it's something about the power of intentionality that will, that will stable you right there in that place of wanting to stop and give you that second burst of wind that you need to push you to finish the 250 going forward rather than, because listen, the same length of swim, the same wind that he needed, the same amount of strokes, right? Everything, the same amount of time in the water was going to be going forward, the same amount. But because of familiar, that, that's why I believe one of the things that you, you have to do, one of the, the, the accompanying partners, if you will, with uh, intentionality, one of the accompanying partners with intentionality, I believe that you have to become displeased with what was. You've got to become displeased with the familiar. I mean, you almost got to not like it, right? Because if, if there's any like to it there, if 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 you liked being comfortable, right, and I just really, really like that place, but God is trying to get you to the next level and you're aspiring to go to the next level, comfortable will always call you back. It, it, I see it over and over and over again. Comfortable will always call you back. You have got to not like that place. I appreciate it. Thank you, Lord, but I, I don't I don't like it. I'm, I'm, I remember when the Lord told me, now, I'm a former barber, former military, got out the military, went to barber school, got my master's and all that good stuff, opened up my own barber shop. I'm very successful in business, right? The Lord tells me to shut down my shop and go into ministry full time. Watch this. I love the barber shop. I loved, I loved the barber shop. I loved everything about the barbershop. I love the sound of the clippers. I love the feel of the clippers. I love the barber chair. I love the smell of the barber side. I love the conversation. I love ordering products. I love fading. I love doing beards. I love doing eyebrows. I loved the barbershop conversation, the janking and the sparring and the debating and basketball, sports conversations. You know, I loved everything about it. I love dressing up, going to work. Yep. Your boy used to dress. I used to wear ties and bow ties, cutting hair. That's back in the day. I'm 53 now. So the old school barbers, we were totally different than these guys. Now I love shampooing the hair. I loved everything about barbering. But the moment God told me to shut down my shop and go into ministry full time, even though I fought it, I fell completely out of love with cutting hair. I didn't like the conversations. I didn't like staying up there. I didn't like waiting for guys who were going to be late to come. I'm talking about the passion was gone. That, that's, that's why times that I fell on hard times, I never went back to cutting hair. There was no luck. Could I? Yes, absolutely. Probably wouldn't be as fast as some of these guys now. I catch up, though. But 
no part of me. As a matter of fact, I only have clippers to, even when my sons grew up, I may have cut their hair one time. After that, I said, go to the barbershop. I want you to have that experience. I'm not going to do it for you. I fell out of love with it. In other words, there was no going back. I've been intentional. I've had intentionality about doing the very thing that I'm doing now. So much so that there is no other option for me because this is the only thing that God has told me to do. 